Heavenly Father, the same yesterday, today, and forever. A God who does not change. We, are, we appreciate you, God Almighty, for your love. We appreciate you, God, for sending Master, your son, to die for our sins. Now we are here calling upon your word, my Lord. Like Paul of the old, we said boldly we can come. Why? Because there's someone who died upon the cross to cover our sins, our iniquity, and in our ability. My Lord, God Almighty, Jehovah. We commit this service under thine hands. May it mean something to somebody. My Lord God Almighty, we are not here, Jehovah God Almighty, to please each other, but to please heaven by telling each other the oracles of life and life eternal. My Lord God Almighty, as I'm standing here, Jehovah, let your honor and glory come and your anointing master that somebody somewhere, Jehovah God Almighty, might receive something from above. 
In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, I'd want to speak for a while. A sermon, a sermon which I can call Stand by Your Decision. Standing by Your Decision. We'll open our Bibles. I'll read from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 24. Then I will read verse 58. The Bible says, may, let me go uh, before, maybe verse 55. The Bible said, and a brother and a mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days. At the, at the least ten, after that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. I will open again another scripture that's in the book of Joel. Joel chapter 3, verse 14. The Bible says, Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. When we look at the scriptures, like what I said, I want to talk about standing by your decision. When we look at whatever we do in life, when we look at Whatever or wherever we go or wherever we are going to stay is about decision. You decide where to stay. You decide a church to go to. You decide if you are to marry the one, the one you are going to marry or marry, be married to. You decide what you want to be when you grow up. You decide most of the things we do is by decision. You can decide also. To worship the Lord or not. You can decide to follow his ways or not. You can decide to be just a nominal Christian or be a true believer. You can decide. Anything is about decision. When we read, we realized there is a man here who was uh, Abraham's servant. That is Eliezer. Eliezer, he was sent by his master. His master, we know Abraham. When we talk about Abraham, for him to be what he was, it was by a decision. We know Abraham, he was called. Wherever he was staying, maybe they were worshipping idols like many. They were worshipping ancestors maybe by many, like many. But there was a voice, there was a God who visited him. And he said, Abraham, leave your kindred. Leave your land. There is a land I want to show you. Before he did anything, Abraham, he had to decide. Should I follow this God or not? Should I go with him or not? He had to make a decision. For us to be reading about him in the Bible today, it was about a decision he made. Then when he decided to follow Jesus, when he decided to follow the Lord, he did what he did. And we know the story. By faith, here we have Isaac. When Isaac was born, I can remember in Genesis chapter 22, the Bible said even the Lord tempted Abraham. And he said, go with this son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. He didn't he even mention by name. If he was just going to say, your son, maybe he was going to take Ishmael. Go and fetch Ishmael and take him and go and uh, sacrifice him. But the Lord said, take Isaac, your son, whom you love. And Abraham had to decide, should I listen to God or not? Should I take my son or not? He decided to take his son. He decided to do away with his testimony. Maybe he had told many that the Lord visited me this way. The Lord gave me a son. But the God, that God came and said, take that son. And go and sacrifice. Abraham had to decide. He took Isaac. Went to Moriah. 
when he went to Moria, went up the mound, when he was about to strike the child to offer him unto the Lord, that was a great decision. And we know, Genesis 22, verse 15, 16, 17, there, the Lord came down. And he said, because of this decision, because of what you have done, what we are benefiting from now, it was because of a decision which was made by Abraham. And he said, because of that, your seed shall possess the gates of the enemy. For that verse, for us to enjoy it today, it was somebody who decided to follow God all the way. Decision. Then when Isaac was grown up now, when he was about to marry, Abraham, he made the decision and said, this child of mine is not going to marry anyway. So if you want to follow the world, it's your decision. If you want to follow God, it's your decision. If you want to worship Jesus, it's by a decision. What are you deciding? Abraham, he decided, this one must marry a kindred, must marry from my family. Then he sent Elias. When he was sending Elias, Elias had to make a decision. The decision which Elias made, he said, how about if that woman, maybe I talked to her and she refused to come, what will I do? He was making a decision. Then the Bible said, Abraham, he called him, Elias, and said, the angel of the Lord will go before you. Elias was not comfortable to go without the Lord. Many of us today, we are comfortable to do whatever we do without the Lord. But Elias had to make a decision. I cannot do this thing outside going with the Lord. I'm not going anywhere. Decision. He decided, I can only go when I know that the Lord is with me. When he heard that the Lord is going to be with me, with you, he was so happy. He said, I can go. Decision. Then we know the story. When he come to that place, he come to a well of water. And when he was by that well, Elias had to decide, should I go my own way or should I be led by the Lord? He had a way maybe he knew of choosing a wife. He had a way he could see, maybe he could look at this and that. But Elias decided that this thing must not be mine alone. Let us to be together in this thing with the Lord. And he said, Lord, he prayed a prayer. By his praying, he was, he was making a decision. Then he said, Lord, the girl I'll ask for water. I'm not going to ask her to water my camels. But by inspiration, if she's the one you would want me to take for my master's son, let her say, I'll give you the water and your camels. The prayer was made out of a decision. Then when he prayed, there came Rebecca. Inspiration struck Rebecca. She came by the well, find the man there, asked the water, gave the man water, in the camels. When you decide to walk with God, you will prosper your way. When you decide to follow Jesus Christ all the way, you will prosper your way. Whatever you do, you must decide. Whatever you do, don't you go alone. Decide to go with him. When he saw that this is the, the, the very woman whom he wanted, whom he prayed for, when they went back home and he told them the story, then they agreed that this is God. Then Elias said, don't hold me any longer. Allow me to go. There was Rebecca. Rebecca had never seen Isaac. She only had. She only saw what came with this man. 
So for her to agree, she had to make a decision. There is a Jesus Christ. There is a Lord. Some of us, we have never seen him with our own eyes. We might not know what's there, but sometimes you have to really, every time you have to make a decision. She had to decide, should I go to a person I don't know? Should I go to a person whom I only have had? Let me tell you, the Bible said, faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. You can decide to accept the promise of God when you hear about these promises. Many of us, the things we are in, we are affected by our decision. What are you deciding today? What are you deciding? Where would you want to be? What do you want to be? Going to heaven is by a decision. Worshiping Jesus Christ is by a decision. Repenting from your sins is by a decision. Joining and you know, walking with him all the way is by a decision. So this girl, the brothers and the sisters, they tried to decide for her. And said, no, 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 you cannot go with her now. At least, no, let, uh, let us have her for about uh, 10 days. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, when it comes to repenting, don't you listen to that other voice which will say repent tomorrow or repent next year. Oh, you repent when that other one preaches, when something is, you know, right inside, which is saying, turn your way to the Lord. When he's saying repent, repent that very moment, it's God speaking to you. You have to decide. Sometimes so many things, they'll be telling you, you can do it next year, you can do it next week, you can do it the next same one. It might be too late. Decide. Then they said, no, we cannot decide for you. Let us hear from the damsel's mouth. Then the damsel came, Rebecca, and they asked, do you want to go with this man? She said, I will go. She made a momentous decision. Our lives, our future, Whatever we are going to do, it's affected by the decision you are going to make. The decision you are going to make today, the Lord God can say, I hate you or I love you. The decision you are going to make now can determine your eternal life. Your decision you are going to make today, it can determine where your destiny will be. We are living in a world of decision. When you are sick, you can decide even also to remain there or getting healed. When you are in problems, you can decide to remain in your problems or come out of your problems. All the mighty men we know in this world who have achieved, they had to make a decision. Maybe, you know, uh, people were resist resistance was coming. Maybe many people were telling them it can't be done. But they decided that what I have started is going to work. That's why they are what they are today. Because they decided not be, to be cowed down by anything. Let me tell you, when you are deciding to follow Jesus, the devil will fight you. Many things will fight you, but you have to decide and stand by your decision. Rebecca, without the knowledge of what kind of man he was, without the knowledge of if he was there or not, or maybe this man was lent to her, she had to make a decision. And a decision made a, a woman we are talking about even today. She decided. She left a kindred and went with men. Whom she did not know. Whom he only met at the well. But she decided. And now we are talking of her. She got married to Isaac. Which was a type of a bride. I would want to say something about Eliezer. Eliezer, he stands for some of us today, the ministers. When you are sent to do something, you can make a choice to go with Jesus or something else. Going by a gift alone, it's fine. But if you don't have Jesus, you won't be successful. The only one who can prosper your way is Jesus Christ. Eliasa, 
He had the capability. He had the riches from, from, from Abraham. He could go with this and that. But he had to decide, I have to go with the Lord of Abraham for my way to be prospered. For whatever you are going to do to be prospered, you must decide to walk with Jesus Christ. Rebecca, she made a decision. There are some men I would want to talk about in the Bible and women. We had to make decisions. And when you make a decision, stand by your decision. Because if you decide right, God will honor that decision you have made. We can talk, sometimes you wonder. And sometimes people can say a lot of things about the God we worship. Because of the way he did things. The Bible talks in the book of Romans. It talks about Jacob and Esau. In the book of Romans chapter 9 there. Verse 10 to 15 there. The Lord, the Bible said, the Lord even said, Jacob. If I loved, Esau, if I hated, before these boys were born. But God, how can you say you love that one before he's born? You hate that one before he's born. We want to thank God. That God does not leave his things as a mystery. There were decisions to be made. Our God is infinity. He knows our end. He knows our, where we will end up being. He knew the decisions you are going to, he knows the decisions you are going to make tomorrow. He knows the decisions you are going to make next year. And some of the decisions you are going to make, the Lord has hated you already. The Lord has loved you already. God, he gave us a prophet in these end times. You can decide to follow him or not. The prophet says, when he was talking about Jacob and Esau, in the book which is called The Faith of Abraham, he said, paragraph 19, he said, and predestination is a hard word among a congregation of people because predestination really, for knowledge is a better word. And predestination looks back to foreknowledge. And foreknowledge looks on to destiny. That God being infinity, in the beginning, knew the end from the beginning. Therefore, he knew what people would do. So he, he could foretell what would, would take place. For he knew what would be. Therefore, before Esau, or Jacob, either one was born, God could say, Esau I have hated and Jacob I have loved because he foreknew that they could be. He never made Esau the way he was. He wasn't willing that Esau would be that way. But Esau, by choice, God knew who to take it that way. So that's how he knows us today. He knows your heart. And if you, you might be able to fool your neighbor, you might be able to fool your pastor, but you'll never be able to fool God because he knows what's in your heart. So when God said, Esau, if I hated, he knew the choice he was going to make. He knew that he was going to deny the birthright. He knew that he was going to deny what he was being given by the Lord. That's why he said, I hate him. Maybe today, some people, God is saying to them, I love them because of a decision they have made, they are going to make, they are making. Some people, he's saying, I hate them because of the decision they are making. The Bible also tells us that God never desired that anyone should perish. It was not the will of God for people to perish. It was not the will of people to get into destruction. But because he knew that people would decide. That's why you can say, I love or I hate. 
decision. We have to make a decision. In the day we are living, decide. You don't have to stay in the border. You don't have to roam around the border. Decide where you want to be. Do you love him or you don't love him? We know saints. The Bible, when it talks about this age we are in, Laodokia, it says the people, they are neither warm or hot. It's full of an undecided people. The people who want to enjoy the benefits of being in Jesus Christ and enjoy the benefits of being in the world. But to this today, God is saying, decide where do you want to be? He even says in the book of Revelation that I would rather that you were cold. I would rather that you were so that I can know. God wants to know where you are standing. Because if you stand there, look up. He said, I will spoil you out of my mouth. You have to decide. We are in the valley of decision. And your decision, it can prepare a way for you. Your decision can foretell your destiny, can, can even give you your destiny, the decision you are going to make today. Rebecca, she made a decision. I believe she's in glory today because of a decision she made. You know, a brother Laban was a worshiper of idols. But because she chose to go with this man to Isaac, Rebecca was worshiping the Lord. Decision. Oh, I can talk about it. She was barren, the Bible says, for a while. And her husband Isaac entreated for her before the Lord. The Lord, she gave her conception. But let me tell you, when there was problem in her stomach, when there was problem in her womb, the boys were fighting. Rebecca, she came to the Lord. Why? Because of her decision. She said, Lord, Lord, why am I thus? She could be able to ask the Lord. She could be able to ask the mighty conqueror, the mighty creator, why am I like this? Why? Because of a decision she made. And the Lord came down and told her what the problem was. If you make a decision and make a prayer before God and make a right decision and make a prayer before God, he will come and answer you. He will tell you why you are where you are. He will tell you what's going to be. He will tell you about your future if you make the right decision. There are some we can talk about. There are some other things we really have to do. The prophet of the hour, he said, so the time has been allotted to every man to make his decision. Whether he is a preacher or a prophet or a church member or what more, he has to go to make a decision. Then he said again, you see, God don't make all our decisions. And there is many times that God doesn't tell his prophets just what to do because they have to make the decision. If there is no decision that we have to make, just wait every move on God. Then there is no overcoming on our part. And sometimes they make the wrong decision. God's anointed prophets make the wrong decisions and many times they are deceived. What was he saying? Many times, God does not do everything for us. God allows circumstances to come. God allows temptations to come. God allows tests to come. God allows the devil sometimes to come after you. And you have to make a decision, should I continue in Christ or not? Because if God does everything for you, then there is no overcoming. 
There is no way you cannot call yourself an overcomer because someone did it for you. But there are decisions you have to make. There are actions we have to, which you have to make because of a decision why you have to overcome. What we are going through today, what you are going through today, you have to decide. If you want to remain in the situation, remain. If you don't want, refuse your situation. Decide to follow Jesus. Decide to receive his promises. There are many promises in the Bible. There are promises written about you. There are things which Jesus did for you. But if you don't decide to take them, they will lay there and remain there and you will remain in your condition. Those who are in sin, remember Calvary was made for you and sin and me. Calvary was made for sinners. Calvary was made for the sick as well. Isaiah 53. Calvary was made for them who are in bondage. Maybe you can say, oh, they forced me. They did this, tell me. But you can decide to follow Jesus. And Jesus can come in your situation. No matter who forced you to do what. But when Jesus comes, he can redeem you from your position. You have to decide. Let me say, the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, under bondage, being used by the devil, being used by Pharaoh without any price. When Moses came on the scene, they had to decide, should we listen to him or not? Those who did not listen to Moses, they remained in bondage. Those who listened to Moses, they were freed. One day, Moses came with a decree. Everyone put lamp blood on your lintels, on your doorposts. He was told, you remain inside because there is a death angel which is passing tonight. Let me tell you, everyone heard the word. I can tell you also, some Egyptians, they heard the word. But a decision was to be made. Moses said, lamp blood. And those who wanted to be safe and secure in the arms of the mighty God, they had to do, to decide to do what Moses had said, do. Those who put blood on their lintels, those who put blood on their doorposts, they were safe. Those who decided not to do that, they died. They had death in their homes. In the day of Noah, when Noah rose up from nowhere, where there was no rain, when we know the Bible said water was coming from the ground and it was ordering the earth, there came a man and said, God is going to send rain. I'm building an ark. The only safety zone is the ark. People had to make a decision. Should we go in this ark or not? All them who decided not to go in, they perished. But all those who decided to go in, that is family, they were safe. The people, they were not even like animals. Animals became better than people in that day. Animals had a conscience. Animals had something which was telling them that the safety zone is in the ark which was built by Noah. Maybe in that time, some people said, maybe Noah is right, but the thing he's building is ugly. Then they built their nice, finished boats. Let me tell you, the only boat which was going to stand God's judgment was the boat which was built by his prophet Noah. You have to decide to follow the word of your day or not. Because God is the same yesterday today and forever. What he did then, he can do it today. And God is not worried about numbers sometimes. He is worried 
about those who decide to follow his way. The people decided not to follow Noah and they all perished. But the ones who listened to the voice of the end time that day, which was Noah, they went into the ark, the animals came into the ark and they were saved from all harm. Decision. There is a day of decision. There is a time of decision. There is an hour of decision. And when you decide, let that decision fight your way. Noah, you are safe because he decided to follow Jesus. Let me talk of a woman called Ruth. Ruth had to make a decision. Ruth was just a Moabite. Here comes these Jews into their land. They sojourned there for a while. Ruth was married by one of them. And there was Opa as well in there. And when their husbands died and Naomi, their mother-in-law, when all the men died, they were left three widows staying together. Then one day, Naomi, when she heard that where they came from, Bethlehem, Judah, there was food. She made a decision. I'm going back home. When she made that decision, she said to her daughter in laws, I'm going back where I come from. They followed her for a while. Then she said, My daughters, I'm old. Where I'm going, there is no hope of you being married. And if there is hope, even if I'm dead, a child, you cannot wait for the child. Go back to your land. Go back to your gods. Go back and live the way you used to. Decision time. The Bible said to Opa, when she heard, there is no hope for marriage there. Then she said, mm, I can't live that kind of a life. Kissed your Naomi. Bye-bye, mother-in-law. She went back. We never heard about her again. But there was this woman, Ruth. Ruth, when she had Naomi saying, hey, go back. She said, Naomi, do not force me to go back. I have made a decision. I'm deciding to follow you all the way. What you are going to eat, that's what I'm going to eat. Where you are going to stay, that's where I will stay. Where you are going to be buried, that's where you are going to be buried. And she said, my people will be, your people will be my people. And she said, your God will be my God. She decided. She left everything. This is what our Lord desires us to do. When you are deciding to follow him, leave everything. And concentrate on him. Ruth decided. They went with Naomi. And she stood by a decision. When she stood by a decision, when they came to that land, there was no hope for a future. The future was gloomy. They did not know what was going to be. But let me tell you, if you make a right decision, the Lord above has got something for you in your decision there. When they were in that land, she realized they needed something to eat. The Lord God of heaven knew that the, this woman, she made a right decision. And the Lord said, I have got something for you. If you make a, a right decision to follow Jesus, if you make a decision to follow the message, there is something for you. He might not show you now when you are making a decision. He might not show you tomorrow. But ahead there, there is something for you. If you make the right decision. There she was. She saw hunger was creeping in. Then she said, hey, let me go and glean. And when she was going to glean, 
Something directed her to Boaz's field. The decision she had made was directing her to her destiny. Decision directs you to your destiny. You know, when she was in the field there, she didn't even know whose field at the beginning was. But when Boaz came, when she was gleaning, because news had gone around of what Ruth had done, of how Ruth had cleaved to her mother-in-law, how she has decided to leave everything and follow Naomi and make it Jehovah her God. What a decision. What a momentous decision. Then when Boaz saw her, asked them there, who is this? When he heard about that it was Ruth, then she started to prepare a way for her. But that was not the greatest of them. One day, when they were winnowing now the barley, then Ruth, being a true church, being led by the Orthodox Church, which was Naomi, Naomi said, hear me, my daughter. Today, you have to do something which you have never done in your life. That is said, today, Boazi is winnowing the barley. I want you to do this. You go to that place. You watch Boazi. Let your eyes be on Boazi. And when you see where he lays, you go let and lay where he lays at his feet. When he see you there, then now tell him, tell him to redeem you. Your redemption is in the decision you are going to make. Ruth made a decision. And the decision was now rewarding her. There was a moment of decision she was to do at the last stage. How about if we to, they were to call her names? If she was going to sleep there, but she was not afraid, she had to decide. She listened to Naomi. And when she listened to Naomi, she went and did exactly what she was told. Preparation of her destiny. When she was there, Laid on the feet of Bohazi. Bohazi, early in the morning, woke up, surprised. There was a lady by the feet. Asked, who is this? Then she said, I'm Ruth. Redeem me. You are my kinsman. We know saints. Bohazi was standing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Redeeming a gentle bride. Because of a decision she has made. And when he realized that, then we know what he said, Bohazi, he redeemed Ruth. In other words, the decision she made took her to her destiny, whereby she was redeemed and she lived in peace and in rest forever. After why she had to make a decision. Saints, we have to make a decision. Whatever we do, wherever we go, we have to decide. When the devil comes like a flood, you can decide to be part of him or continue resisting him. When sickness is raging, you can decide. When spirits are raging, you can decide. Should I cow down? Should I bow down to them? Or should I follow Jesus? We must make a decision. There was another man who was called Mordecai in a foreign land. In a land where they were subject to some other people. But Mordecai, he believed in a God he was worshipping. He decided to follow him all the way. And there was this man, we know the story in the book of Esther, who was raised up, that was Haman. Then when he was raised up, and it was a law for everyone to bow down to Haman. But, 
Mordecai decided to follow God instead of the laws of men. Then he did not bow like everyone else. It came to the ears of some because he proclaimed what he believed in. He said, I am a Jew. I worship God. And God said, do not bow to any other God except the God Almighty Jehovah. He said, I'm not going to bow down to anyone because I'm a Jew. The moment you will take your Christianity and declare it and refuse to bow down to anything, to anyone, the Lord God Almighty, the Jesus Christ, he is going to fight your way. He is going to fight for you. Let me tell you, it came to the ears of Haman. He decided to, to destroy all the Jews. But because of that momentous decision, Mordecai held on to it. He said, I am a Jew. I'm not going to bow down to anyone. And we know the story. He never bowed down. Destruction was determined. And somehow, Esther was a queen. And because of that decision, they prayed to the mighty God. The mighty God Turned around the tables. If you make the right decision to follow Jesus, God can turn around the tables. There were gallows which were prepared for Mordecai. The gallows, the one who ended up hanging there was the one who prepared them. Why? There is someone who decided to follow Jesus all the way. Never cow down to the things which were presented to him by the enemy of our Lord. Decision. Hold on to your decision. If you hold on to your decision, it will make a way for you. We know the story. Mordecai ended up being mighty. He was raised up. Take the position of Haman. Why? He decided to Wait upon the Lord. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. If you wait upon the Lord, he will fight for you. If you wait upon his promises, he is going to fight for you. Like what I said, there are many promises in the Bible. Promises for you. If you are sick, you can decide. The Bible said, by his stripes, we were healed. Jesus, when he went to Calvary, he was striped. He had his scars. He was beaten. They did everything. But my Lord, when he died, he died for your healing. He was striped for your healing. It's up to you to take it as your promise or not. I can talk of a man by the, by, by, by the get beautiful. The man by the get beautiful. That lame man, the Bible said he was coming there to seek for money, to beg for money. From the people who will be going to worship. Look how cruel circumstances are sometimes. When they were coming to that gate. Some were going through that gate to go and worship. But this man was coming there. So that he can beg for money from the worshippers. How cruel circumstances sometimes can be. How cruel the devil can be sometimes. But one day, he was supposed to make a decision, that man. Every time he was left there and the people go for worship, maybe in his heart, he desired to worship one day. But he said, if I go to worship, I won't go back home with money. He was choosing to sit there. But one day, Two men were passing by. That was Peter and John. 
as they were passing by. Like always, he was seeking for money. He was expecting to get something from there. Then the men looked at at him. Then Peter said, look at us. With anticipation of some few coins. Peter said, silver and gold, we have none. But such as we have, we give. Rise up and walk. It was up to the man to believe that or not. He had to make a decision. Then Peter, the Bible said, he stretched his hand, lifted him up. It was for him to decide. Maybe he was going to cry, hey guys, I was born like this. Who are you to tell me? But he decided that this is the time to walk. And as he was being lifted up, because he decided to walk, he walked. You can decide. If you are sick, let me tell you, receive your healing. That's what the Bible says. Because it says, by his stripes you are healed. Accept that promise and decide to take it and the Lord God will deliver you. Whatever situation you are in, Jesus died for you. You can decide to follow him today. He can shape your destiny. If you decide to remain that way, you remain that way. The man decided and he had to walk. And the Bible said he was leaping up and down, rejoicing. Why? He was given healing. Whatever we go through, we have to decide. Today, I don't know if you have made your choice. It's a time to make a choice. Jesus has been presented to you. God has been presented to you. Do you want to follow him or not? Young girls, young boys, I know the world is so nice out there. Things are glittering. But do you want to follow the world or Jesus Christ? Old men, old women, the world is so nice. Things of this world are so nice. But do you want to follow the world or Jesus Christ? You are given an opportunity to make a choice. Do you want to follow him? One day, on the day of Pentecost, when Peter came from the, from, from the upper room filled with the Holy Ghost, when the people were wondering, some were saying they are drunk, some were saying they are mad, some were saying this and that, but when Peter preached a sermon and he said, oh, praise God, amen, talked about Jesus Christ, that the same Jesus you killed, the same Jesus you died, God has made him Lord Oh, praise God, amen. Many people who were there, they were, something happened in their heart. Then they asked, what shall we do? We want to make a decision. When you hear the word of God, make a decision. And when Peter heard them ask, what shall we do, men and brethren? We have heard about your Jesus Christ. What shall we do? Peter said, repent, every one of you. And be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There was a decision making which was done. The Bible said many people, like 3,000, they repented that day and they received Jesus Christ. They were baptized. Why? Time for a decision. Let me tell you, this world, we don't know what's going to be of it. These sicknesses which are coming, We don't know what's going to be of them. But decide today. There is only one safety zone which you go and go into. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you going to follow him or not? Are you going to repent or not? Make a decision. A decision you are going to make. It can shape your destiny. It can shape your life. Whether you are going to go into eternity. It can give you eternal life. I have decided to follow Jesus. And when you decide to follow Jesus, don't you turn back. The Bible is even talks about if someone is plowing, if you are plowing and you are looking back, he said you are not worth of the plowing. When you are holding the plow, look ahead. When you decide to follow Jesus, look ahead. That decision is going to shape your eternity. It's going to shape your destiny. What are you saying today? What are you saying today? I'm saying make a decision. 
We are in the valley of decision. In these end times, we are in the valley of decision. Many came during the time of Jesus Christ. Many refused him. Some accepted him. The Bible said when he arose from the dead, at one stage he saw many, many people, but only 120 are the one who decided to wait upon the promise. What are you deciding today? What are you deciding this hour? When he said, you receive the Holy Ghost, are you deciding to follow him all the way? When he's saying, repent from your sins, are you deciding to follow him all the way? When he said, leave the world alone and follow the word of God, what decision are you going to make? Today is a day to make a decision. It's a day for you to make a choice. As I'm finishing, I want to invite you to this God. Choose him. Choose him. If you make a choice for him, it will shape your destiny. Jacob made a choice. He said, a birthright, I'm going to take it. And he took it. When he took it, you follow your Bible. You are seeing angels. When people sometimes were after against him, love and wanted to come and fight the mighty God because of the choice he made, he came down to fight for Jacob. When Esau was coming to meet him with 400 men because he made a choice, God came and fight for him. Jacob, he became Israel. Why? Because he made a choice to follow him all the way. All the people we see in the Bible, they were making a choice of following him all the way. And whosoever was making such a choice, God was fighting for them. Hezekiah made a choice. One day he was told, Hezekiah, you are going to die by a prophet. He was sick unto death. But Hezekiah to take a choice, should I die or not? The Bible said he prayed. And when he prayed, the same God said you are going to die. Because he made a decision to live. You can decide your destiny. You can decide to live. You can decide to be healed. You can decide for, your, for, 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 for the blessing. For, 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 for prosperity. You can decide for your redemption. You can decide for you to be delivered. You can decide. The Lord Jesus is there for you. The Lord Jesus is there to shape your destiny. I don't want to come to a time of prayer. I don't know what decision you are making. But there is a Jesus here. Who say if you choose me. You are choosing life. You denying him. You deny him. You are choosing death. He has got a place for you. You want to shape your life. You want to shape your destiny. As I'm praying, make your decision. Lord Jesus, the mighty God, the mighty Kongara, we are living in a time Jehovah God, which is so hard. The devil has lifted himself, come like a flood. But master, we know there is one who has raised the standard. The standard is in thee, Jesus Christ. The standard is in the Holy Spirit. The standard is in your word. The standard is in your message. My Lord God Almighty, we are deciding that we are not going anywhere. We are going to stand by the Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to worship you. We are going to Pray to only one, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. We are accepting our healing. We are accepting our redemption. We are accepting our deliverance. We are accepting our promises. The Bible is full of promises. Paul spoke one day and said the things we see, they are temporal. But the things we don't see, 
They are the ones which are forever. My Lord, we are looking up unto thee, O Lord. As you said in the book of Isaiah, look unto me, O ye ends of the world. We are looking up unto, me, unto thee because we know in thee that's where everything we desire comes from. Heavenly Father, there are many who are making decisions. My Lord, accept their decisions. That at that day, when you are calling your saints, we will be rejoicing together. Jehovah getting into glory and singing it was worth it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Make your decision. Amen.